You hear about the corduroy pillows? No. They're really making headlines. What's going on? <laughs> a corduroy, if you fall asleep on a corduroy pillow, it leaves lines on your head. It's a head- headlines. Ha! Kate, uh, Jesus, you're just taking us to a whole new level. I didn't even get that. I was thinking, me. I'm like, why would you put, <laughs> why would you put your head on a corduroy pillow? Give Nobody you would. It's a stupid joke. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is the Token CEO Podcast. It is Thursday, September 9th. I am joined. So before I say your name, I have you in my phone under about six different names. I just want to share that. (laughs) I do. I I think I go by a different email last name than my actual last name here. And then I have like four different nicknames. So understandable. Okay. So I've got Barstool Kate with me. I have you under Campbell Mm -hmm. and Mannion. Yeah. And I got divorced and then I got real lazy about switching things up. And oh, so that it's was just like confusing? six years ago. But I kind of like it because it's harder to dox me, I feel like, for my enemies <laughs> to figure confusing. me out. You're confusing. Yeah. So you uh, never know. Well, I love that, Kate. I just Thanks. will have you know. I have you and Catherine in my phone and then yeah. Kate. I also like to make HR really earn their keep. Yeah, you I agree with you. You military and... people are yeah. just, sh- are just mm-hmm. sneaky. Smart, probably smarter than the rest of us. <laughs> All right, so it's Thursday, September 9th. This is episode 180. Jesus, we've been doing this wow. a while. We are presented, Kate, by Sports Research. Mm. Do you know what Sports Research is? I certainly do. Love it. <laughs> All right. So Tell me more. Sports Research. I love Sports Research. They make collagen. They make vitamins. They make an at-home workout kit. Ooh. So if you want to get a little workout while you're watching over the little guy, you can yeah. do that. They also make the waist trimmer. Have you ever worn a waist trimmer, Kate? Well, we were just talking about before the show started yeah. that I, I'm wearing super high jeans instead, but that sounds much better for me than wearing I enormous feel like jeans. It's actually the workout equivalent of high-waisted jeans yeah. where it adds circulation and heat to your troubled areas, i.e. your midsection, Ooh. and then it helps promote circulation and sweat so you get skinnier. I love my body's like a waterbed right now, so I could use something like that to hold it in. Sounds like sports research might be just for you. Yes. Um, you can get sports research if you go to sportsresearch.com. You can get 25% off if you use code Erica. Whoa. Not that's bad, good right? Amount. 25% yes. off. That's a that's big great. discount. So you can get anything you want for fall or beach season, whatever floats your boat. Okay, Kate. So you're co-hosting the beginning of this episode with me. Yes. Which I dropped the bomb on you about 17 minutes ago as you're riding New Jersey Transit, <laughs> probably thinking you're going to have a great day. Well, it was. it's always great when CEO says, hey, you coming in today? And uh, yeah, really early around 1130. Uh, yes, I'll be in. So yes, that's on me. But glad to be here. I'm glad you're here, Kate. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. So here's what we're doing today. We're covering headlines. We, as always, have our Q&A from people who listen to this podcast or follow us on social. We have a great interview with Danielle Collins. We've got Kim and Alex, the mother dog. Have you met them yet? Yes, they're a delight. They really are. Yes. They're just like a blonde a shock of blonde kindness and in the middle of the so office. Nice to have a mom in here I too. Agree. Like Isn't a, a she the, moms are taking over. I'm telling you, they are. So. Barstools for moms. Yeah. Do you feel like you got to like sit up straight and like act better when you walk by her? I do. I do a little bit. I had to do. We did ribbon dancing for stool streams, and she was one of the judges. And I was like, well, I was gonna goof off before, but there's that, mom here. I got <laughs> no, like, I'm certainly not gonna you know, do you that. You want to impress your mom? Yeah. yeah so I agree. Sit up mm-hmm. a little straighter, and then we're going to do adulting. Um, before we get into it, though, Kate, this episode is dropping on the 9th and mm-hmm. the 20th anniversary of September 11th is on the 11th, obviously. Um, I've been watching this documentary called Turning Point mm-hmm. on Netflix. Have you watched that? I haven't yet, but we've had a lot of people reaching out for Zero Blog 30 to, to like, can you guys review it? So that's on my document. Oh, for this it's week. really yeah. incredible. Mm-hmm. I, I give this documentary an incredible review. I've cried in every episode. What it talks about is the plot for 9-11. And Mm -hmm. what it essentially does is it goes all the way back to the Cold War. Yeah. And essentially the the Russians had invaded Afghanistan. We felt, we, the Americans, felt that that was a huge affront and was a matter of national security. We then funded the Taliban. Yeah, it was essentially a proxy war. Correct. Basically, yeah. We funded the Taliban. The Taliban defeats the Russians. Then we're like, we're fucking out of here. Then it's civil war. It's chaos. The Taliban is incredibly regressive and cruel and harsh on on a number of levels. Um, And in that time, Osama bin Laden, who was Saudi, came in. He was a financier. And then Mm -hmm. it's really he built a terror operation adjacent to... 
uh, the Taliban and that the, the chaos of civil war and frankly, America's distraction really enabled him to plot one of the most horrific events in in modern history. Right. And the Taliban pretty much gave him and al-Qaeda carte blanche to like hang out in Afghanistan and train and do everything they did there and really build up a, a good a good base to do their their horrible operations yep. from. So yeah. So I guess the first thing I would say just in anything talking about 9-11 is just like a moment for everyone who survived that event, everyone who lost someone and just what happened to this country. Like I, I in, I, I think everyone remembers where they were during oh. 9-11 and it's yeah. like, we'll stay with you for the rest of your life. I also feel that it's such an incredible story about American resilience and just the heroes among us. Like mm-hmm. that to me is so inspiring is all the people who helped other people, all the firefighters who were climbing the stairs of the towers when they knew they would never come down. Mm-hmm. So I-, I thought that was really incredible. But the other thing I thought about what's a text conversation that you and I had had. Um, so I, for anyone listening, I had texted Kate last week, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I had said, Hey, Kate, is Biden fucking up? Like, what's going on with <laughs> yeah. Biden? Like, is this is he getting maligned unfairly? What's your take on this? And you wrote me back this really eloquent text that was essentially about, hey, there's a bunch, there's a myriad of issues happening. Mm-hmm. We had some mismanagement on the ground. Biden, the Biden administration was slow to respond. Um, and there's a whole host of factors in in what created uh, her and is right this moment a horrific situation happening in Afghanistan. So right. what is your, pers- you know, as, as someone who has a military podcast, who thinks about na- national, do you think about national security, Kate? Sometimes. Yes, I do. Like, Oddly enough, it's say. kind of stuck in your head. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. So. so how do you think, describe what you were sharing with me? So basically, this was kind of a shit sandwich that got passed from administration to administration to administration right, left, whatever your background is, you can look at each one and see ways they screwed this Mm -hmm. up and then kind of pass the buck on to the next person. Um, But ultimately, the one of the hardest parts, I think, for a lot of veterans is because we developed relationships with a lot of our interpreters and allies. There was maybe people don't realize I've seen the narrative. Why didn't the Afghans fight for themselves? I think almost 60,000 Afghan army members died over the last 20 years, 60,000. I mean, that's a huge number. Um, 50,000 something civilians, like the Afghan people gave a lot and fought really hard, but there was also, you know, it's more complex than that. But we had a a lot of allies over there. And one of the things we had promised many of them, like interpreters and um, people who helped us in all sorts of other ways, you do this for us and work with us. We promise you safe passage to the U.S was the thing we will get you out of here we will get you out of here and i think what everybody saw with the end why everyone's paying so close attention was that i mean over ten thousand people outside kabul airport desperate to get on planes and it it just didn't pan out uh, for for so many they're still you know they did get hundred thousand something out um going to different countries but so many thousands and thousands left behind um we did so much work in Afghanistan through third party contractors. So yes, the U S military was there, but we also had, um, say Smith corporation worked with the government to hire interpreters, blah, blah, blah. Well, as the war dialed down and shifted and changed throughout the years, a lot of these corporations disappeared and don't exist anymore. So when an interpreter or an Afghan ally needs X, Y, Z on their paperwork to finish getting that special immigrant visa to get to the U S or to get out of there, that company doesn't exist. They have no contacts anymore. They're completely screwed. A reason this is considered like an issue of national security, tens and tens of thousands of people, we didn't keep up our end of the deal for them. And so in the future, who's going to want to work with us type thing? Like in the future. And just, you know, it creates a lot of ill will. It creates a lot of issues. Um, But so that was a difficult aspect of it. And I think it was really hard for a lot of veterans too. I mean, we on the back end of Zero Blog 30, hundreds of messages from veterans desperate to get their interpreters out and it just kind of adds to that moral injury like oh my god you know in the end the taliban comes back in takes everything over and this person i care deeply about and his family is stuck in this like nightmare again kind of thing yeah with a target on his back essentially and the taliban saying all sorts of like we're new we're different now we've changed we're more progressive but you can't take them for their word so um yeah it's really it's, heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. It's really difficult to see. And especially like I don't see any fault. Like you said, looking at September 11th and seeing the stories of the incredible people 
if you look at each little instance and it reminds you of the good of humanity, if you look at the smaller aspects of the war, the boots on the ground, the troops who were doing incredible things for the man to their left and their right, um, we've had Medal of Honor recipients here in the office. Um, Kyle Carpenter jumped mm -hmm. on a grenade for his friends. Like there's so many instances of incredible bravery and incredible kindness between troops and the Afghan people and all that stuff. The boots on the ground didn't screw it up. It's the suits yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the Pentagon and the White House who, you know, so I kind of look at it as almost two different wars. Yeah. It's also, I think, yeah. really terrifying is you think about the ramifications of decisions that have been made in the last three weeks mm -hmm. and what that is going to incubate in Afghanistan and other places yeah. around the world. Like mm -hmm. what, is, what the butterfly effect of suit decisions right. from Washington or wherever, from world leaders versus what the, the real cost to human life, to daughters and sons mm -hmm. and brothers and sisters and friends and you know, colleagues, yeah. which is really hard. Yeah, it is. And that's, we, and again, on Zero Block 30, uh, the amount of DMs we've been getting from veterans who just feel, what was the point? What was it all for? And the one thing we all keep circling back to and looking at, you know, what it's going to, the mess it's going to create for us in the future mm -hmm. is you did everything you could and you did incredible things. And that's, that's really all you can say about it. So otherwise you'll just spin yourself in circles. And so, I mean, I've this been doing This is what it you're saying to weeks. the veterans. To the veterans. Yeah. yeah. Like you, sh you should still be so proud. People saying to us, like, I don't, I used to feel proud and now I'm so confused and blah, blah. It's like, you should be so proud of everything you did um, because you volunteered, your country was attacked. You stepped up. This is an all volunteer force. And you went and did what you were told to do to the very best of your ability. And you put your life on the line. So um, yeah, it's just been a really interesting interesting time and seeing everyone's reactions and mm -hmm. everything so great yeah i will thank you for covering that yeah we are going to transition kate into headlines does that okay. sound good for you let's do it first headline is according to analysts americans and the good people of england are spending more time watching video on tiktok mm -hmm. versus on youtube so tiktok is surpassing Sorry, we have like construction, <laughs> construction guys. Outside the window. Window. Uh, so TikTok has surpassed YouTube in terms of video consumption. Where are you watching video? Completely TikTok. I have to really? say, I am, you know what it is for me, okay, not to bring up my beautiful, perfect advanced baby again, uh, but you know what it is for me? I spend a lot of time with only one arm available. It's mm. hard to type on the computer. It's hard. So what do I do when I'm breastfeeding or when I'm, you know, just rocking them back and forth? It is so easy to just... <laughs> Hold your phone, Hold vertical my video, phone and just flip through TikTok after TikTok after TikTok, and yeah, I it's disgusting how much I consume of it now. Who's your favorite TikToker right now? I or I what do you into? Are you just are you just like whatever TikTok serves up for you? Well, the algorithm is it's also very smart, so algorithms. crazy good. Yeah, yeah. sometimes YouTube sends you're like, oh okay, um, but the algorithm is so good. If you want to know about breast milk, people, I got <laughs> mom talk. I got yeah. So YouTube is obviously still much bigger than TikTok, but I think how old are you, Kate? Can I ask? Thirty five. Okay, so you're in your 30s. <laughs> yes. Early, early 30s. 30s. Early to you're in your early 30s. Yeah. You're spending all your time watching videos on TikTok. Yeah. Imagine if you're 15 years old. Oh, hands down. I, my younger cousins, like, they're just moths to a flame. They can't get enough Yeah, of it. that's right. So yeah. TikTok was the most downloaded social app worldwide in 2020, as well as in 2021. Every year before that, since 2012, it was Facebook. So mm -hmm. TikTok has over, overtaken Facebook. I wonder if Facebook will try to buy TikTok. Wouldn't be that surprised. I don't know. Okay, so so that so that's our first headline, Kate. Glad you're validating what is happening in the mm -hmm. world. Um, all right, second one is Dot Dash. So Dot Dash is a digital media company. Do you know what Dot Dash is? No. I did not. Mm -mm. Okay, this is this one was shocking to me. So Dot Dash is owned by IAC. Do you know what IAC is? No. Okay, IAC was Barry Diller's company, or is Barry Diller's company? Barry Diller is married to Diane von Furstenberg. Mm -hmm. He is a titan of the media industry. IAC is a collection of all different types of media brands. So okay. they have mm. College Humor, they have Tinder, they've got a whole host of brands. I actually think when Peter Chernin first invested in Barstool, he had the vision that he, that the Chernin Group might have a Barry Diller media conglomerate with a right. lot of different brands in the house. What's interesting is I think there's a whole bunch of companies. They do $250 million a year in revenue, which is mm. a lot of revenue. That's mm -hmm. like over 2x what we do. Um, what's 
Actually, no, it's not. Sorry. We've had a very good year. Thanks to Zero Block 30. Yeah, it's all because of Zero Block 30, the niche military <laughs> That's <podcast>. right. Just <laughs> uh-huh. propelling us to revenue. <laughs> Anyways, what's interesting about this is that I think there's all sorts of media companies that nobody's ever heard of. Mm-hmm. Dot Dash says that it's about health, fitness, wellness, news information. I'm sure they've got a killer little al- algorithm in the inside of that company. They're serving shit up in Google. Mm-hmm. They're serving it up on YouTube. Maybe they're great on TikTok. They're doing $250 million in revenue. They have created an e-commerce store around just booze. Okay, so they're doing anything and everything related to liquor. They've called it the liquor.com store. It's hoping that their standalone site, so clearly Barry Diller Mm -hmm. and the good people at Dot Dash have bought up a bunch of URLs. Then they're going to make e-commerce stores around them. I think that's very smart. I don't think consumers care about shopping at you know, they don't care about an e-commerce experience that comes from a brand name. Like how much stuff do you buy off of Instagram from like some no name company in China? Right. Yeah. A lot. Right. Uh, Unfortunately, I have very weird socks now. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) What's going to be interesting is I think there's going to be more and more big media conglomerates buying URLs, creating or propping up media companies that are going to service very niche and very specific types of audiences with standalone Mm -hmm. commerce sites. So that's the big news coming out of the IAC. The next headline is from Brandy Melville. Do you know Brandy Melville? I do because I never fit in the clothes. Yeah, I didn't either. I was way too old for Brandy Melville. I was a little too broad-shouldered. Yep. So Brandy Melville, the way I would describe Brandy Melville is you would go to Soho or you would walk around, you know, any, I would say, city center or vacation destination and there would be a Brandy Melville store. Mm -hmm. And Brandy Melville, as far as I can tell, is like peddling like a beachy blonde girl lifestyle flannel shirt cut off white jeans i would say it's a hollister for a southern sorority girl great what i would say great great description so oh. brandy melville has found itself in some trouble kate because oh. the ceo of brandy melville a gentleman named stephen marson uh he's the founder and ceo so the founder and ceo of brandy melville Um, is being accused of being racist, of being sexist. He essentially has made it a practice or allegedly made it a practice at Brandy Melville that if a woman was fat, she was to be fired. And if he had too many black women working in his stores, he was like, oop, get them out of here. We want skinny blonde girls. Not great. No, not, not not great. Not great. So one of the things that people are saying is that every day, girls who work at the stores are required to send a full body photo to executives. No. Some are as young as 14 years old. If he thinks a girl is too heavy or unattractive, he demands that she be fired. Can you imagine? How is this no. allowed to happen? What the hell? All right. We will not be shopping at Brandy Melville. I will not be. I never could before, yeah. but I never you will, will, even if I never lose will the weight. again. But yeah, you have to be so completely out of touch right now. I mean, it's wrong in any era, but especially now, the the way to uh, also just like keep turn. pace with the times. It's so crazy. Sexism is so rampant. It just rears its head, and you're just like, how is this possible? Yeah. Um, speaking of the NWSL, which is the National Women's Soccer League mm-hmm. players, are having a massive beef. So the NWSL championship is coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, it is going to be held November 20th at Providence Park, which is in Portland, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And the players are bullshit because the game is going to be broadcast at 9 a.m., not on primetime. So 9 a.m. local, which is 12 12 p.m. Pacific. Um, And the reason it's being broadcast on CBS, which is great, love when women's sports are broadcast, Mm -hmm. but they won't air the championships on primetime because college football is at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on Saturdays in the fall. Is the CEO of Brandy Melville behind this? Probably. Wouldn't He's be surprised. probably like, how skinny are the girls on the team? Yeah. So my opinion on this is, look, National Women's Lo- Soccer League, for the men's n- national team blows as far as Who? I can tell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, this is the league that spawned Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, Jessica right. Chastain, like big female icons in sports. Yeah. Can't even get itself a prime sp- slot. I actually feel like we're supposed to be happy it's broadcasted. I, Period. It's crazy. I went to their ticker tape parade with, down in the 
Canyon of Heroes and everything. And I mean, they had what, like a million people show up to celebrate them? I feel like it's clear they're like the, the here, I don't know. They're one of the biggest, hottest things going in sports. Yep. So can't, it's crazy can't get a primetime slot because yeah. football's on. Okay. I got huh. you that. All right. The next headline, Kate, you're going to like because you're a TikTok fan. Yes. Um, is do you know of a woman named Fat Trophy Wife? No, I okay. need to. Yep, you do. So Fat Trophy Wife was on Alaskan Airlines flight last week. Mm -hmm. She is fat. She is mixed race. She's got tattoos everywhere. She's got those earrings, you know, which create that huge hole the in gauges, your ear. Yeah. Oh, is that what that's called? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she wore the spandex biker shorts and a sports bra on the plane. Okay. okay. So you could see her stomach. Okay. So she was asked repeatedly by the stewardesses to put her clothes on, was told she was dressed inappropriately and was ultimately asked to leave the airplane mm -hmm. because she was violating Alaskan Airlines dress code. Hmm. This is the second time this has happened. I want to say there was another case this summer with a thin woman who was also what she said, what she called it was she was slut shamed on the airline because she too was wearing something that Alaskan Airlines did not deem to be appropriate. So the difference is, is that when the skinny white girl was mm -hmm. accused of wearing a bad outfit, Alaskan Airlines apologized publicly. Right. When Fat Trophy Wife gets hauled off the airplane, almost missed her gig. She had a gig that day. Mm -hmm. um, they did apologize, but they per they apologized to her privately, offered her a future discount, which is like hearkening back to, did you ever hear about the $50, $50, $50 gift code? How, yeah. do, how do you remember the $50 gift code? I was here, here for it. Yeah, that was very stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I remember going, huh? Yeah. That sounds, yeah. So we had a person, a lawyer who worked here, who we fucked up something in the store. It was over we, video rights. Or yes, something. it was over video rights. So yeah. we, there was a time at Barstool Sports where we were not as tight as we are right now about managing rights. There are a lot of people who send us videos mm -hmm. for us to feature their videos because when Barstool Sports features your video, you get much bigger, you gain a lot of followers, your right. video gets attention. Um, we also, at the time, the internet was much freer about sharing videos mm -hmm. and we shared a lot of videos. We shared, I believe on Christmas Eve, we shared a woman's video without her permission. We had someone here violate the protocols we had put into place to ensure right. we never did that. And the general counsel, or sorry, the person who worked here, one of the people who worked here, offered her as remediation a $50 gift card to the store. Yeah. Which, as you can imagine, did not go over well. In a very screenshotable DM conversation, which very she then used against us immediately. Very screenshotable, DMable yes. way. Mm -hmm. Which really <laughs> just made us look incredibly tone deaf yeah. and stupid. So we will hope that Alaskan Airlines, one, yeah. embraces people of all different shapes and sizes. Yes. Women are wearing sports bras and biking Get shorts. It. Get over Get it. Get over it. I've, as long as none of your holes are touching the seat. Honey, I don't care what you wear. I don't understand why... So what? It's your midsection. It's I know. It's your... not like your midsection is going to reach across the seat and bite someone. Yeah. And I feel like I know some guys who wear like the, it's like a football tee, but kind of like short now. If, I feel like if a guy was wearing like cool shorts at that and his like midriff was showing, nobody would blink twice or care. Yeah, I, just I think like you're 100% white. Yeah. All right. So that's it for headlines. Can you, you hear about the corduroy pillows? No. They're really making headlines. What's going on? <laughs> a corduroy, if you fall asleep on a corduroy pillow, it leaves lines on your head. It's a head headlines. Ah, That's Kate, a, Jesus, you're just taking us to a whole new level. I didn't even get that. I was thinking, me. I'm like, why would you put, <laughs> why would you put your head on a corduroy pillow? Give Nobody you would. It's a stupid joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up is Q and A, Kate. So we've got some Q and A okay. from folks. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. This person says, "I'm new here. Mm -hmm. I think we could do a whole episode on this. But what are the th biggest things to remember when putting together my resume? What are the biggest things you think someone should remember putting together their resume?" Oh, that the person looking at your resume is going through a whole stack just like yours. So don't be afraid to stand out. I feel like people are so nervous to do something wacky when really that's probably the only thing that will get you noticed. Like, I don't know. I always think of Aria with the pizza boxes, how he, he, he delivered. probably the only reason he has a job here. Only reason he has a job here. And it turns out he's incredibly talented, so that worked out. But like he delivered a bunch of pizzas to Barstow when you opened the box. His resume was in there. Immediately stood out to Dave like... Don't be afraid to get weird with it. Yeah, don't be afraid. Say. I think that's yeah. a that's a great line. We've had a bunch of people here like that. We had 
Francis Ber- Berry made, he, he wrote the story of us handing out the Goodell towels at <laughs> Gillette Stadium, yeah. made it into a box, created an entire book, and mm-hmm. that was his resume. Yeah. I had a guy the other day send me a CVS receipt. So we had one guy who sent us a framed movie poster mm-hmm. with QR codes. Like, that's how you got his resume. So awesome. I agree with you. I think one of the things when you're putting together your resume, you got to remember that the hiring manager is looking at hundreds of other resumes, yeah. dozens if not hundreds of other resumes. Two is they're looking for very specific things. Mm-hmm. Do you have the experience they're looking for? Do you have the skills that they want? Do you work at a place that is somewhat relevant to the company you want to be employed by? And do they like how you come across? What are the things you've done? How long have you stayed at your various jobs? My big thing on your resume is I don't think you should sweat your resume too much. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think you should obsess over your resume. One, because it's a commodity. There's, you know, dozens or hundreds of resumes that somebody's looking at. Two, my second piece on this is that don't use a bunch of jargony marketing words that right. say nothing. That bugs the shit out mm-hmm. of me. If somebody does that on a resume, I'm like, you're out. I used to have a bullet point of mine that said hard worker. <laughs> like shit like that. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh my God. Directed to the point. Yeah, not great. Directed yeah. to the point. So I think that Those art, excel. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't. Proficient. Uh, mine <laughs> yeah, was proficient. Was my mother made me put that. Proficient mm-hmm. at Microsoft Office. Mm-hmm. I remember I had one resume once that I spelled the word YouTube wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway so you do you try to stand out if you can yeah if you really want a job you've got to get you've got to rely on something else than your resume yeah okay second one this one's sad this one makes me sad so let's give this person some love erica i'm stuck i have no clue what my passions are i want to make a career out of something i'm passionate about but i can't spend another dime on schooling and i don't even know how to figure out my next move what do you recommend to someone in their 30s who feels so completely lost in life? I relate to this. I was in my late 20s um, by the time I got out of the military and finished school. And I thought, oh, my God, it's like too late for me. And, you know, once your GI bills up, I didn't have money to go back to school again either. And a huge thing I started doing to figure out what my passions were because I was lost. I had no idea what I, what I wanted to do. I started volunteering in my community because you meet all sorts of different people and you make all sorts of neat connections through that. And there's so many different volunteer opportunities. It's kind of a free way to dip your toe in different Mm -hmm. careers, Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's with animals or tutoring, maybe it's whatever, Um, but definitely through volunteerism. And then second, there are free writer's workshops. Like maybe you can't afford college, but there's so many free workshops for, for writing, for art, for whatever. I found a free veterans workshop at NYU and I went every week. Um, And then third uh for me i was like well maybe i like comedy you know go embarrass yourself creatively somewhere um it's free to go up and do a stand-up night somewhere it's join a sketch team find something creative um but basically finding the free things in your community and networking you'd be amazed also too at how many people like oh you're feeling lost right now i would love to help you like there's so many good yeah there's good people out there yeah so many good mentors that's great i i i I love that i think that's a perfect answer actually i don't have a whole lot to add I think the other thing is what's amazing right now about Netflix and the internet is you can truly educate yourself about anything. Like I spent all weekend watching masterclasses. Mm -hmm. Masterclass is an amazing service. I learned Bobby Brown makeup tips. I learned about writing a novel from... She was speaking fluent Cantonese when I walked in. It was crazy. It was was like just from one video. It's amazing. I'm so gifted. She's so... She's very advanced. (laughs) There's nothing she can't do. But I think that you can find... You can find information about things that you're interested in without spending money. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. The second thing I would say is everybody feels lost. Yeah. So you're not alone in feeling lost. Everyone feels lost. Don't be so hard on yourself about not knowing what you want to do. And then I think your point is great, Kate, which is just to start somewhere. Try something. Mm -hmm. Maybe you got to take a day job to like pay your bills and make ends meet, but then Pick two to three things that you might be interested in, and it's totally okay if you hate them. Right. And you can be like, ooh, I'm crossing that off the list. I'm going on to the next thing. Yeah, part of the process. Part of the process. hone it down. That's right. Okay, hold on. I got to re-log on to my computer here, Kate. My jeans are so tight, Allie, that I can't lean over. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have Kate's. You can keep that in. That's fine. Um, All right. We both topple over, and we're like stuck on like turtles on our backs. Uh, all right. Okay. Third one. Third Q&A, Kate, is 
what is the process at Barstool for when something goes from an idea to full out execution and making it happen? Example, the Barstool College football show and even, or even just a new podcast or YouTube show. Do talent pitch ideas to you and Dave? I think it depends definitely on the scale of the production, mm -hmm. like how much production does your idea actually need? And the more support it needs, probably the more levels it has to mm -hmm. go through to get there. But uh, for a lot of us, it's more, you know, they say you better to ask forgiveness and permission. It's more like finding a camera guy, going out and doing it, and then figuring it out from there. If that first thing you kind of got something, then there's room to grow from there, at least from yeah, what I've seen. I yeah. agree. I think most, the best things here originate from someone who has a lot of passion about it and is motivated to use a very low pr amount of production resources mm -hmm. to manifest it. Yeah. So like I've been thinking about like Vibs lowering the bar, right? Like so simple. So simple. Yeah. One of our biggest shows here. No one was like, "Hey Vibs, go make barstool personalities eat weird stuff or do weird things." Nobody mm -hmm. said that. Vibs was like, "I'm either going to sit here all day and probably feel insecure mm -hmm. and anxious about what I'm doing because you know Dave and I are walking by being like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. He created the show. It's probably a top five show at Barstool Sports. And we all love it. It's and you delight. love it. It's yeah, fun. That's yeah. right. So um, so that's how we do it. Okay, Kate. Yeah. This is a new... Uh, so we've got a new ad partner for the show. Thank God. Um, this is JustWorks. So what's great about JustWorks is that they make it easy for you to start, run, and grow a business. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to tell you, Kate. I don't want you doing this, but okay. I'm going to tell you anyways. Um, what's great about JustWorks is employees can onboard themselves in minutes. It's with simple software that makes a great first impression. You can give them access to health insurance plans. JustWorks handles payroll as well as PTO requests all on one platform. Plus, JustWorks has expert 24-7 support for you and your team. I will tell you, being a CEO, that... A manage, managing the employee benefits, time off, PTO, well, PTO is the same thing, payroll, that stuff is a massive pain in the ass yes. and it matters a lot. Mm -hmm. We yep. used to screw up payroll like definitely at least once a month, mm -hmm. if not once a quarter, which is hard because we only paid Chaps twice a month. Chaps was getting paid double in Chaps the beginning. Chaps was getting paid double, yeah. got Rico <laughs> yeah. taking his double pay. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> payroll and stuff is hard and yeah. JustWorks can help you manage your employees. I think that intimidates so many people from starting their own thing is that aspect of it. So it sounds like JustWorks just does that for it you. It really does. It makes yeah. it simple to hire and manage remote employees across 50 cool. states. That's also a huge inhibitor of growth is yeah. finding people. So if you can find people, you can get them to work for you. You mm -hmm. can convince them it's a good idea. JustWorks help you, helps you pay them. So if you go to JustWorks.com. JustWorks.com. They can give you more information about hiring and managing uh, your workforce. I love it. I love it. Especially TikTok. I feel like TikTok is a huge entrepreneurs. They get one little thing of their product or whatever to blow up on TikTok, and it's insane. All of a sudden, they're overwhelmed with all sorts of things. Yeah, they should use just works. They, they, Hire if, more if people. If the TikTokers... Um, yeah. Fat Trophy Wife is probably well poised to have a very mm -hmm. good business right now. Just yes. Works could help her do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kate. Love it. Great. That's done with Q&A. Now we've got a great... So we've got Kim and Alex. So what's been yes. your experience with Kim and Alex? Kim judging the ribbon dancing and mostly just seeing them around the office. They're just like, they're so delightful. Yeah, yeah, they're so delightful. Super good vibes. Yep. Uh, so yeah. So they have a mother daughter show on TikTok. We have been watching them for some time. Alex actually had, she was on the Dave Portnoy show. She's mm -hmm. been palling around with Dave. She actually said that Barstool was the only place that she wanted to work. And what's funny is you have a mother daughter duo really capturing what makes the mom funny in real life oh yeah because it is authentic it's like completely you see the tiktoks of them like tooling around the mom's house and for the weekend or whatever she's got the mask and all and then you meet them and you're like oh this is exactly as they are correct on TikTok. Yep. perfect so we have them join us and we'll kick it to that interview are you, and but you're also from oklahoma yes okay so let's just start there what is it like being from oklahoma what's oklahoma like i've never been to oklahoma oklahoma has the stereotype of like when I studied abroad in college, people were like, do you ride a horse to school? Oh, okay. And like you'd wear flowered dresses all the time? Yeah, like we yeah. had the land Little run. House on the prairie. Little House on the Prairie. That's exactly. Is that from Oklahoma? It's Kansas, I think. Little House on the Prairie? I'm not sure where they I don't know this. where that's at, but it's close. Okay. Being from Oklahoma is not like that, but it's 
flat. Okay. Um, the people are very nice. They okay. say hi everywhere. Everybody always says hi. Yes, nicest people. When okay. Um, it's reserved or the people are reserved. It's very conservative. It okay. Votes, it votes red since like there's a statistic on this, but no county. There's 77 counties. No county has ever voted all blue. Like really? Okay. So it's very conservative. Okay. Um, it's like the base church, of the Bible Belt. It's the Bible okay, so Belt. Okay, church going. Mm-hmm. Very church going. Do you it's still fit in there or no? You, you fit in. Yeah, we, yeah, we both fit in yeah. there, I mm-hmm. would say. Okay. Um, but we're from, I would say not everybody is like that. It's very impo- I think it's important to note that not everybody thinks like that. Yeah. And the younger generation definitely thinks different. And although they're behind on change, like we always say change starts on the coasts. Same with outfits, trends. Like anything yeah. starts on the coast and then comes to the middle. Okay. So it's the same with So everything. you're doing crop jeans like two years later. To- always. Always, yeah. 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 Always two years later. But that's the same that's okay. with um, politics. Any social justice, any of that yeah. starts there, comes in. So we're doing it, I would just say, maybe. The, the younger generation's pretty woke there, though. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we start watching you guys on TikTok. So explain explain the Kim and Alex TikTok. Okay, we ran into a guy on the street last night that told me he was like, "You're not funny," pointing at me okay. at all, and he was like, "She's." It's funny. all about your mom. Yeah, <laughs> and it's I was all like, about your mom. And I was like, "Well, of course I'm not funny, but somebody has to film her." Correct. Like a lot. You're like, "I'm just a narrator." Yeah, yeah. like you're welcome. But the narrating is what's yeah. funny to me. <laughs> you I think you're both very funny. That's nice. You're he didn't. Oh, it's okay. I forgot his name. But at least he knew who you were. Yeah, and he told us, I which I appreciated. So he recognized you on the street. Her. Is this new? Yeah. Do you like it or don't like it? It's fine. It's fine? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I just woke up. I had no makeup on, but other than that, they didn't seem to Do care. You, are you like, <laughs> shit, I should have had a better outfit? Sometimes I'm like that. No, I just wish I had put something on my face. Yeah, totally. It's yeah. Yep, I got you. I'm like mascara all the time. Okay, so you start making these TikToks about your mom. I, I quit I quit my job, and I was like, what, what was your I'm, job? I was doing marketing for a CBD company in California. Remote? Or you were in California? No, I lived in California okay. at the time. And I quit that, and I was like, what am I going to do? But during COVID, I was going crazy working from home, and I was like, I don't really like my job. One of my friends was like, just make a TikTok. Like, you love to film stuff. So I had blue hair at the time, like this royal blue tips, but like a lot of it. And I had just had my hair terrible. dyed. And I was flying Wait, home. Say that, Kim? It was terrible. Yeah, sounds it. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 and it actually didn't look good looking back on it. But I That's flew. All right. Flew home it that at the time. It did at the time. It I loved it. Totally. I was like, I look awesome. Now yeah. I'm like, oh. um, I went home, walked in the door. I told my dad. My brother said, I want to see what mom says when she sees your hair. Okay. Because she's always had an opinion on everything. Everything. And so I was like, I pulled in the driveway. I was like, Dad, just film mom seeing me. And she gave like a very candid, very opinionated, very I literally hate your hair reaction. Okay. I love colorful hair. I've always loved it. But you know who doesn't like colorful hair is my mom. Hey, oh, look at that. Do you like it? No. No? So I think it's ugly. That's her way of saying she's happy I'm home. Ew. Oh. <laughs> that one means I love you. Libby. Alex, your hair is awful. Mom! I'm sorry, it's awful. Kim. I think you should cut it off. <laughs> she still loves me. Yes, I still love you. So I just cropped it together, made a TikTok, posted it, and like put my phone up for three days. And then I checked it, and I was like, oh my gosh, like that actually did well. Mm-hmm. So then I stayed home, and I just kept making TikToks of her. And then I went back. She's very easy to film and like. And give some uh, give some examples of the situation, like the the night mask and the Amazon deliveries. Like my dad's out of town, so I'm sleeping with my mom. I'm gonna sleep with you. Oh, goody, Alex. It's good to stretch before bed in the cow face pose. Opens up your hips. Move. There you go. This leg comes out. This goes this way. And this one comes up there. Ow. Do you think this makes this wall look putrid? I don't know. What movie do you want to watch? Um, you pick. The Mask? Please no. go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> when is your mother at her best slash worst? She's at her best li- all the time. Like, every day. She's a gift that keeps on giving. The your gift mother. that keeps uh-huh. on giving. Mainly when you're at home in your natural habitat, yeah. though. That's like, that's your area. That's her okay. stuff. She feels very comfortable. Yes. Okay. That's important. Okay. And probably first thing in the morning, I notice I'm pretty annoying. <laughs> Okay. And how is that now that you guys are here? Like, is, are you able to get as much fodder now that you're together in New York? It's a little bit 
it's tough because we're like in different rooms or mm-hmm. I mean the hotel rooms are so small we couldn't yeah. even stay York, in the same one. New York one. City yeah. hotel room is don't you think one of the most disgusting things on the planet? It's yeah. terrible it's, and we're still It's in like one. the toilet yeah. and the bed are one and the same. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. you and just, you pay extra for that. And they're not clean. Yeah, they're not clean. They're not the waters, clean. the showers never it's No, at I least think, the new ones have wood floors. Like I had to move to one that had carpet and I was really grossed oh, out. Carpet's yeah, it's disgusting. 100%. And then you're like that, you, that doesn't have to be clean because somebody's going to stay in it anyways. Like, they're never going to be short on... I feel like none of the hotel rooms are clean. We've moved to four of them so far. And I feel like I'll call and be like, the room's like, can can I just get housekeeping? They're like, no. And I'm like, and that's the whole thing is no one's going to move yeah, hotel rooms. Yeah, they're like, rooms. no, fuck you for asking. Yeah, yeah. and you're like, ah, oh, okay. You're, you're here. You're, you're like, staying. you're right. This yeah. is fine. And I'm like, I'm not going to get my luggage realistically. Go down to the street, walk on the cobblestone. Like, I'm not going to do it. So, fine. Okay. I agree. So, go back to your mother. So, we're... Here in New York has been more difficult than being at home for sure because we're still living in a hotel and it's like it's a lot of change at once. Yeah. She hadn't had a job in 31 years, you know, so it's like. So, Kim, how's that? It's been fun. I mean, I've really enjoyed it because it was, I mean, like since they moved out and le- left for college and then kind of quit coming home and went to their real world mm-hmm. jobs, it's, I've been kind of bored, I guess. Sure. I mean, it's just like, what what's my role besides taking care of my parents and my okay. family? That Because there's a lot there, yeah. Um so Are no, you outsourcing it's been, that now? Well, my sister's there. We're trying, okay. you know, like trying to get my dad in place and things like yeah. that. It's been hard. But it's, um, no, it's very exciting. I love it. And I love New York City. I've always loved New York City. Okay. We used to come every year over the holidays with the yeah. kids when they yeah. were younger. Yeah. yeah. So I always loved New York City. So it's been fun. She says, she always says her job is being a caretaker. And so my brother is three years older than me. And so I'm just touching on what you just said. When we both left, you would say you felt like a little lost. A little lost. A, a lot, lot. lost. Yeah, which I think happens to women, yeah. to be honest. I didn't because think I'd so be one of those work. people. I thought I have so much to do, but man, I was really sad yeah. when we were gone. Mm-hmm. It's empty. Very empty. And I'm sure you filled up a lot of space. She yeah. did. <laughs> yes, she yeah. did. They both did. But since she was the last one to leave, it was really hard. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. And, and my now, husband was working a lot then, so then it even got worse. It was like he got busier, and then I was like, what in What the am hell? I doing yeah. with myself? But it's so amazing that you're reinvent. I mean, she's a celebrity now. <laughs> We've reinvented. She was Kim. like, you know Thank what? I, I could be like an empty nester or just an internet celebrity. <laughs> I'll you just know? do TikTok or <laughs> I'll just do TikTok. Be an empty nester at home by myself. Yeah, exactly. I could play bridge or work out all the time or like arrange flowers. Nope. Or no. be a TikTok star. I do think going through COVID kind of helped that like really explode where I was like, this is this is not fun. I don't yes. I don't want to be doing this. Yes. Yeah. I think COVID made people acutely aware of their circumstance. Like you've both said it. I felt that way personally where you're just like, I hate this. I'm not comfortable. Because you were stuck in wherever you were mm-hmm. and you had to confront like what that was. And that you're like, so I either true. want that or I don't want that. And I think what's amazing about you two seem so seamless, like just floating in New York City. And it's like, <laughs> ah, it's going to work. <laughs> oh, it doesn't be like that sometimes. But I do think you're right. COVID just basically blew whatever you have in your face. And then you're like, I'm either going to do something about it or not. And I guess we both chose to, which is nice. But yep. And together, which is also really nice. That's been really nice because I went to college and then I moved to California and so I had a lot of, and then during COVID, I didn't go home at all, hardly. So I didn't see her. Yep. Um, and so now it's kind of like, I feel like I'm back in high school seeing you so much, yeah. which is really nice because we do have a good relationship. So it's like, I want to see my mom. Yeah, that's great. And then now you're in business with your mom. Now I really. So who's the boss? <laughs> Alex is the boss. But you're, but it, that's hard because she's the content i don't do well unless she does well oh so, so how do you motivate her right You're by motivated. making her comfortable <laughs> it's like so reverse i know i'm did like did you just figure that out so wait Maybe. you have to make your mother comfortable like you're like go mom well i think about it as like if i was a coach on a team and you know how like all athletes receive criticism differently like Completely. there's some you can be harder on some not I am very direct and kind of can be a little mean sometimes, which I tried for the first like three weeks. I would just yell. How did your how did your student respond to that? Crumble. Crumbled. Crumble. 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 Yeah. Crumble. So I was like, we have to readjust my delivery. I have, I have noticed that you readjusted, which is very like, good. Like start with a compliment and then you then you get them with <laughs> so the, like, nice. I wouldn't be here without you. Yep. Um, a lot I love of that. when you do this. <laughs> Look how good have this you, is. Have you considered? The guy <laughs> yeah. on the street thought you were funny. He hates me. Everyone hates me. People love you, mom. And so we do. We take that approach, and then she feels comfortable. And then you just hit her with the like. And then she delivers. Okay, excellent. Okay, and how do you tell me how you came across barstool sports? I came across barstool sports for the first time 
do you know what OU Texas is? Yes. Okay. So I was, but these people won't. So. Okay. So I basically it's our, I went to the university of Oklahoma, our biggest game down in Dallas. So it's a three hour drive football game. Huge deal. We would go every year. I was in the car with my brother driving Are down you dressing there. dressing up for this game? What's the culture there? Always dressing up. Okay. Like a dress? No, it's like cowboy boots. Like it's like a oh, country. Like slutty cute. Like it's cowboy boots more, and short shorts. Yeah. Cowboy okay. boots, short shorts, like a red Top of some sort or a red dress, but usually with cowboy boots. So you're showing leg. You're yes. not wearing my pajama top dress outfit. No, I this would be hot there. Yeah, you'd it's be, really hot. You'd be oh, I'd be hot in this? Okay, yeah. that's not cute. Okay. Think like southern football culture outfit. Okay. It's very Okay, stuff like that. that looks cute at a tailgate. Yes. Okay, so you're yes. in the car. I'm in the car driving down there, and he's listening to like the old KFC radio. Okay. And he's like cracking up. And I'm like a little confused, but I'm like, what is Barstool? And he's like the best thing ever okay. like if you ever want to date a guy basically learn what barstool is and i was like okay so i just sat in the back <laughs> the whole time and was like what is it and then i like figured it out and i ended up there was something i really liked about it i think it was that it was pretty everyone was just unapologetically themselves and like kind of absurd and so i was like okay so I had my bio in college as Barstool Sports as a joke because I was like, if I want to date a guy. Yeah, so this is like, the fastest way to do that. Here's yeah. a really cool way to do that. And people would be like, you like Barstool? And I'd be like, yeah. I get, I'm not really <laughs> You're know. like, how cute are you? Like, yeah. <laughs> do you? Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, oh, you don't? I hate them. Yeah, I, was, I was just thinking that. I think they're ridiculous. <laughs> Bunch of misogynists. Terrible. <laughs> yeah. They're sexist, okay? Um, so then, then as I got older and really understood, and as Barstool evolved too, there was a lot of things that I took to and loved mm -hmm. and I just grew up as a person so when it came time to apply places like this is one of the things Dave asked me on the phone was like where all did you apply and I was like just barstool like this is the only I don't know that really the mom daughter TikToks would that was the vision at the time yeah I was like oh this is weird how I'm gonna get there I'm gonna but... launch my career with my mother <laughs> yeah and that's what I think is best yeah um and so this was the only place I wanted to work. I okay. was like, if I'm going to do it somewhere, not for myself. And I didn't want to do it for myself because I was getting bored, kind mm -hmm. of. I was like, I want to work with other creators. Yeah, your vibe together is great. It's funny because you're so dominant here, but it's Kim. You know, it's your mom who's the star of the show. Like, I like that with you, too. Oh, that's nice. I've never thought about that. You, She is the star, but I never thought that I was dominant. I mean, do you, you're so alpha, don't you think? A little. Yeah. 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 Probably. In a great way. Yeah, sometimes I don't stop talking. That's okay. Keep going. I think you got that from me, but I don't talk out in public like that. So oh, when really? I'm at home, I talk the most. You just don't shut up at home. Mm -hmm. But here you're so quiet and demure. <laughs> it's because I. <laughs> when think... your mom's in the office, I feel like everybody needs to just like sit up a little straighter. Oh, like, posture. I feel like I should you. like dress up a little. People won't cuss around her. The, like we were riding back, we were in the at the airport um, with jet ski, and he was like, Fuh, "No, so, excuse me," and I was like, "It's why does everyone keep doing that?" Everyone's like, "Yes," and then they get it's like they kind of change, and that's really that's been really I funny. I think that's it's enduring. Funny, yeah. I like that. it is enduring. It is. I like that. It's sweet. When I first got here, and we were d trying to do like all these shows. I, we all lived in a house together. So it was like a fit. There was only like 15 of us and then there was 30 of us. And then I wouldn't let them go anywhere because it would just be a disaster. So I just was always sleeping like in the guest bedroom and whatever place. And people, you know, it'd be like 20 year old guys and they'd just like sit up a little bit and be like, ooh, sorry, I shouldn't smoke pot in this room. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Um, okay, so you always wanted to work here. What did you, when did you become introduced to Barstool Kim? Um, I just remember when Michael was younger, I remember him showing me things. I kind of okay. thought at the beginning it was just funny bleeps of sports and stuff. Yeah. That's what I really thought it was. Yeah. I did, wasn't sure. And I thought it was just, just sports period with college, I yeah. think is what my original thing was. That I don't, I really have learned a lot since then. I, I mean, bet. like I wasn't yeah, so what sure what think? any of it was. It's great. And then when I got here, I thought, oh my gosh, it's going to be so different. But I can't tell you how everyone that works here is so kind. And you can, I mean, they seem like they've all had great upbringings and they're very yeah, they're good people. Good people. Yeah, very good, good people. people. Raised yeah. like in all crazy different ways, but all really good people. Uh -huh. You, what you said the other day was one, she thought everyone was going to be like a, but I don't remember the exact word you said, but like. Yay, who's just running around that like wouldn't talk to her and everybody comes over and like introduces themselves mm -hmm. to you. The other thing you said was they move so fast. It moves so yeah, fast. It's she fast here. Can I your head on a swivel? Which I love that. Yeah, it's fun. It keeps it very interesting. Uh -huh. What do your friends say? They're all still learning. Okay. Yeah. And some of we all that a lot like, of them watch the, the fight. subject of gossip. You know, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, all my friends are pretty hip. Hip, yeah. Yeah. 
and and, like and I'm not contest. shocked by f bombs because we hear that a lot also with my friends, not okay, around okay. our kids, but yeah, with each other. I love that you okay, say F-bombs. I don't know. Yeah, you can say the word. This is a fuck friendly podcast. <laughs> it's like an f bomb. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay but sorry, but they're learning too. They're learning too. Uh huh. I've, I have had a lot of people ask me what it is, and I told Alex it was funny because even in like someone stopped me when I was at the Walgreens by my house, and she was like what is Barstool? And I tried to explain it, and I guess I wasn't doing a very good job. And the cashier was listening to us behind me, and he was like, it's the coolest thing. And he just started explaining, and I was like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that what that guy said. Yeah. But it's also, don't they, do you find that your friends have their, or your your friends have their favorite? Like, my mom loves Glenny Ball, so my mom is always like, how's Glenny? And she has, like, a crush on Big Cat. So she'll be like, oh, Big Cat looks so handsome on Showtime. You know what I mean? Okay, they're not that far yet. They're still oh, learning okay. how to watch right, the we'll shows. Get there. And, yeah. Yeah. They're like, what is it? How do I find it? Okay. Yeah. So what's next for you two? Um, well, something we're, I'm trying to figure that out. Like, what do you mean what's next? Like, like what do we do? What next? are you gonna do? Um what are here? You gonna do here. Yeah. We wanna do we. I don't know if you want to, but some kind of a okay, so I put out this questionnaire on my Instagram and I was like, We're gonna t-, she wanted to film a video walking in the park. Okay. She kept asking me if we could just please walk in the park and film a video. So I put out on my So you said no or yes? I said yes. Okay. I was like, Oh, we can do that, but I don't know what we would I'm not big on parks and I don't know what we would talk about. So I asked Instagram, I was like, What would we talk about? Okay. And there was all these questions for her. Like, what's your skincare routine? What do you think about this with my kids? And I was like, I can't answer any of these. Yep. So I thought what would be cool for her is like some kind of an empty nest type podcast. Totally. Um, because you would be good at that. And then also just some sort of show. I love doing real life content or like showing a clip of what we did like if it's me moving into my apartment yeah. here or her packing me or something like yeah. that and then real life moments that are f- funny and amplified because you two are funny yeah and, and they're relatable I think that's what we do best yeah yeah and then it's like us commentating on them in studio something like yeah. that okay that's great um i think that would be really fun to do i don't know how we get there and start that but that would be do you have deal. someone who helps you here do you have like a producer no oh really Mm-mm. we just like put you in two desks over there and say go figure it out that sounds very us. Awesome. Yeah, but that's okay. what I like about it. Because, okay. but because on the other token, nobody was like, you have to do this, 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 and this. So it was really nice. And did you have other media companies reach out to you? Mm-mm. Maybe. I don't read. read I wouldn't mail. know. <laughs> like, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. And what are you nervous about? Like, what are you getting? Are you nervous about things? I would say, if you have one, say it. Are you nervous about anything? I'm just kind of, I'm just, it's easy for me because I feel like she's in charge. So I kind of get to go with the flow. Yeah, you're like. But at first I was supposed to be doing a TikTok once a week and that was totally stressing me out. Like, okay, I think I yourself. had bags under my eyes from that because I first couldn't figure out how to do it. And then second of all, I would get so nervous when I'd start to record myself. Yeah, it's so I awkward. Sound, yeah. yeah. Um, so now she's like, just don't worry about that. Just do your Instagram. <laughs> my brother okay. had to call me and he was like, mom can't make a TikTok a week. <laughs> like she's freaking out. She your is, brother's like the agent yes. slash. You're, yeah, yes. Yeah. He was and like, he, she doesn't want like, to Alex, you. you're being too hard on the talent. <laughs> yeah. No, that's what it was like. And my dad was texting me and he's like, mom can't do the TikTok. And I was like, oh my God, then don't do it. Like it's just one a week, but don't do it. So we're down to just some Insta stories. Okay, great. And perhaps an Instagram post if okay. we could do that. A podcast you could do, though. Would you feel more comfortable in that? Yeah. I mean, I feel fine. It's just filming myself. And yeah, then, it's awkward. Yeah. And then you're like, what the, what the hell do I say? And I can't, but like, she can dr- drill it down to a few sentences. Yeah. I have to say I'm a, a rambler. Yeah. yeah, same. And then that doesn't go well with yeah. that, I don't no. think. So <laughs> she tried to make an, a video last night about she watched one of your shows and wanted to tell her so friends good. about it. Okay. And so she was trying to communicate that in a video. And it was, no, it was really cute. But it was like, you know, four minutes of yeah, just go like, watch Mom, America's podcast. 90, yeah. <laughs> And I was like, what are you trying to say? She's like, I want people to go watch it. And I was like, oh, just link in bio. <laughs> but instead, she's like, if you're like me, her name's Erica. And I'm like, land the plane. I'm the same way. They're, these guys were like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> we only have a minute. Um, wait, I had a thought there and I just lost it. Uh, so is your brother happy, mad, sad? Does he have FOMO? Should we send him some merch? Like, where is he in this whole thing? Oh, he's got some FOMO. <laughs> so okay. much FOMO. Okay. He's like investment banking in Atlanta, and he's like, 
He's like, what? What, how did you get that? Are you at Rough and Rowdy? You're actually there. And I'm like, yeah, we're there. And he's like, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> what do you think about Rough and Rowdy? We, oh, oh, it was awesome. It was great, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was so fun. So fun. The energy is insane. And we're going to go back. We yeah. said, we're no, like, the energy is insane. And I thought when God, I was like, are we going to be safe there? I yeah, was really worried about it. And then we got there and I felt great. No, yeah. it was fine. Everyone was really nice. At the, everyone is very nice. Everyone's always very nice in our orbit. We went to a rough and rowdy once in Providence, which I'm trying to go back to, where the crowd was throwing beer cans, full beer cans, lobbing full beer cans at us all night. <laughs> that wasn't the best. That was like how I felt unsafe at rough and rowdy. <laughs> but full beer cans at you? At everyone, at Dave, at Big Cat, at me, at Robbie Fox. <laughs> I would be cracking Oh, up. it was so great. They were bombed. But yeah, it's fun, right? It's just a bunch of weirdos. We were like... Because we would tell people we were going, and the reaction we did, they'd be like, oh, and we were like, oh no, like something about it is not going to feel good. Yeah. We felt completely fine, but there was a point afterwards where we went and stood on the risers to like watch everybody. Yeah. We were like, this is this is the Oklahoma State Fair. Which oh, I think okay. Is- we should do Oklahoma State Fair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. It that would be, be a good piece of content. It, it would, would be definitely great. Be. Yep. Yeah. But we felt completely fine. And we, what we loved, everybody was just like, nobody was half assing it. No. Oh, and no, everyone's all in. It was all the in. Fighters are all in. The ring girls, they're Every, all in. Yes, it's so I cool to see people girls. do that. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah Frank like, the Tank's all in. He's all in. Everybody, we were yeah, like, Dave nobody here. Pac, Pac-Man's entourage, yeah. they were complete. We sat right beside oh, him. did. That. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. The security guard would tell us to sit down. He'd be like, you got to sit down. And I don't know who was behind us, maybe his girlfriend or something. And she was like, if you two sit down, I'm going to be pissed. So every time I sat down, she would push my back back up. And he would tell me to sit down. I was kind of in the middle of it going, okay, I don't know what to do. We're like, we're going to stand. We're standing. We were like, this is the best. Ener- it was the yeah, best energy ever. So fun. So fun. Okay. So my funny story is when we hired you guys. So Gaz had been watching you. Gaz was like, okay, we got, we got these two. We got these two. We got these two. And Gaz has good eyes for the internet, which I love. Um, and then so we make it happen. And the HR people are like, we don't get it. There's one contract. <laughs> we have you two on one contract. They're like, what do you pay the mom? What do you pay the daughter? How does it work? And I was like, oh, I don't know. Just figure it out. Just get them in here. <laughs> just do something. Just get them in here. But I feel like you guys have just come in and you just have like fit right in. That's nice. Sometimes I, don't, I I hope so. I think so. We love it here. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, dude, people think we're just like weird, <laughs> weird, but we absolutely I think love you're it. Weirdly normal. Okay, that's what makes you two so interesting. We'll take that. <laughs> normal, don't like you think? No, normal here or normal at nor. Like, well, I think no one's normal here, so it's like. It's like a high school lunchroom. You know what I mean? It's It's like you guys could sit at a number of tables. I think the best people here can sit at. You can sit with the jocks. You can sit with Frank the Tank. You can sit with the nerd producers. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a compliment. We'll take that. Sit at multiple tables. You can definitely sit at multiple tables. Thank you. And I think you're just very calm. Don't you think you two are so calm? I, I, we feel calm. Are you calm in your life? Yes, pretty, mm, yeah, I had a lot of not calm years. Okay. So I you realized, got, system. got it. I so there is one thing I can say for sure is that I got that out of my okay, system. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's now I'm like, happy life for me is a little more calm. Okay. I can get more done and focus more because when I go off, it's off. Yeah. Okay. So to stay straight is in my best interest. Are you calm, Kim? Um, I don't think anyone would describe me as calm. Oh, really? I don't think, I think so. You're would so you? calm. I think your mom I just looks think like I've a kinder been... Sharon Stone. Do you think so? A what? Sharon Stone. You don't know who Sharon Stone oh is? I don't know. I know who she is, but I don't know what she looks like. Well, how do you know she isn't you? Well, I know the name. What Basic she... Instinct? Like, she's oh so gosh, sexy. Eddie... Oh, that's, no, yes. Show, like, a younger picture of Sharon Stone. You've, you've never seen yeah. Basic Instinct, have you? No, but. Yeah, look at it. Your mother looks just is... like Sharon Stone. Oh, well, that's, I'll take sexy. that compliment. I mean, <laughs> Thank you. I agree. Don't you think? Yes. That people always, you know what people do? She, People are always saying you look like somebody. She looks like a celebrity. You I, have made your mother into what she should have always been. It was always Thank her you. calling. It wasn't about being, it was her calling. <laughs> That's pretty. She was not meant to stay in the home. She was not. She didn't, you don't even want to. She was meant to. for the internet. She, you were meant for TikTok, Kim. <laughs> oh, she yes. was, Kim. You were meant you for can, TikTok. It just wasn't made yet. You can't make one, but you were meant to be <laughs> on Are you going to make merch? Yeah, we want to make merch. What would you make merch on? Well, that's the problem. Okay. You don't I, know? I don't know. We, okay. You need to come up with like a tagline. 
Do you guys do coffee cups? Sure. Not not do you guys do coffee cups? Do we do coffee? We cups? do coffee cups. Okay, that uh, that's you the one thing. Cup? We just love coffee oh, all the great. time. All right. Um, what kind of coffee? Uh, oat milk lattes, half oat milk, half water is our favorite coffee. Oak, oat milk lattes? That sounds terrible. So good. Half oat milk, half water. Steamed together with the coffee. Really? really good. Don't mm -hmm. you miss having fat in there? Oh, I, think, I oh, hey, But I do, when I'm at home, I will do the bulletproof. Oh, I love a bullet. I love yeah. it with the butter and the, mm -hmm. the, yeah, I love that too. She is not afraid. She brings her shaker out here and does the packets and shakes the co her because first Because they sell coffee. a pot. They sell packets now that you can travel with. Oh, really? Yeah. And oh. you just put them in your shaker. It's really? Good. We mm -hmm. should get them to sponsor this. Okay. We can definitely make coffee cups. What would they say? Maybe like you, we sell a set of two and your face and your mom's face is on them. How cute. I'd buy that. <laughs> Let's do that. That's a great idea. Let's oh, do that. Okay. Would we sell them separately though? Because hers would sell more. Oh no, they have to buy yours. Okay, to get her. see there, then I'm in on that. If I can like piggyback on her, yes. Okay, and then we do a merch bonus, so it's like you could you could fight with your mother about who gets the merch bonus. Oh wow, yeah, that would be good. When okay, let's make the coffee cups. I'd okay, like to do that. I like that. Okay, I'll do that today. That's a okay. great idea. Oh my gosh. Um. Uh. Okay. Last thing is, what's your advice to like? What have you learned so far in your life? In my life? Yeah, like big things. Um. The big the like biggest what comes thing to mind. I've learned is. Okay, people are always going to have opinions, and especially coming from Oklahoma, I feel like people have these opinions on the way things should be and how maybe you shouldn't go against the grain, and going against the grain could be a bad thing. Like, the little inner child of you is like, I don't want to disappoint my parents, and then you're like, I don't want to disappoint anybody in my life, but there's so many people in your life that there's so many opinions that you're always going to disappoint somebody. Yeah. So the best idea, took me forever to learn this, was just do what you want to do. Like literally just do what, if it makes you happy, but it pisses off 10 people, that's okay. You're going to be better off if you're just happy. That's right. That's not Oklahoma. That's life. That's yeah, that is true. That is, that you is know. life. And always be yourself. And always be yourself. What's yours, Kim? Oh, try to always be myself. <laughs> okay. That's great. <laughs> my life lesson that I've learned is yeah. you really just like, my mom used to always say it's better to be talked about than to talk about people. So. Oh, okay. That's a great one. I love that. Stay out of the. Stay out of the fray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be the fray. <laughs> That's better. Be I the agree. Fray. I like that. Or just be and be kind to everyone. Okay. What's yours? I have the same. I I believe the same things. I think you can be yourself and be successful. I don't think you should try to be anybody else but yourself. And I agree with being kind. And I also feel that you should always be pushing yourself. Like the more uncomfortable you make yourself, the better you are. Because Good. when you get complacent, you know what I mean? It's like boring and then you start to pick at yourself or you start to pick at other people and it's just not fulfilling. And then it's hard to get out of that. It is hard to get out of it and you become part of, you become part of that, you know? Mm -hmm. there's, a lot, there's a lot of opportunity, I feel like, to get uncomfortable here. Definitely. I feel like everyone here is always trying to be uncomfortable. Yeah, which is, do you, do you think if you surround yourself with people that make themselves uncomfortable, you're more apt to, Definitely. to become uncomfortable? I also love to be around people who are much younger than me. We're younger? Love. Yeah. I agree with that. I love that. Don't you feel mm -hmm. like that? Like, I feel being around someone like you changes how I dress. It changes the words I use, mm -hmm. the music I listen to. I love being around young people. I think it makes you so young. Do you, so it wouldn't necessarily be like my generation. It's whoever's young at the time. Whoever's young at the time. Keep, Your generation's okay. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you can pull goals in our generation. Yeah. Are you a millennial? Yes. Okay. What do you think about millennials? I, lo I love millennials. Oh, you do? Yes. Why? They're just, they do things different. Okay. Well, now they do things still different. Okay. But at the time when we were like young and new and people were like, that's a millennial thing. Now you guys were like owning it. You were yeah. like, yeah, it is. It's okay. like, you're welcome. This is something different. Nobody's yep. done it like this before. We're making up words. Social media yep. makes the millennial thing go haywire. I yep. think it's awesome. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Do you think you guys know how to work? Yes. Oh, you do? Uh, that, that's mm -hmm. so funny. So do you think, that, is your perception that millennials don't like to work? My perception, well, th let me caveat that. The millennials here, I think, are th some of the most amazing people I've ever met with work ethics that will, like, blind you. I think, in general, the thing I worry about with millennials is that uh, millennials think that they have to be perfect because you saw perfection on social media. You're like, you saw, all you see is perfection. All you see is an Instagram post. You don't see, like, which is why I think you're content is so interesting because you're showing real life in a way that 
it's pretty, but it's not pretty. It's pretty, but it's not packaged. Do you know what I mean? Which I think is interesting. Um, and then I think the second thing is millennials had were so scheduled and so cared for like by their parents that they have a hard time with free thought and breaking out of the box. So like I I agree with you. I love the weird. I love the like fuck everybody. We're gonna do. We're gonna. We're millennials. We're gonna own it. The the challenge with millennials is I think that that Oklahoma ness is much stronger in millennials than it is in any other generation. Does that make sense? It does make sense. It is interesting. Do you disagree? Okay. I, you are welcome to disagree. No, no. I, yes, I I feel that with you. Um, I do agree that that we were raised by our parents very coddled. Kind yeah, of. like you, kids became a luxury. Yes, born on silver platters, as the yeah. saying goes, type thing, which I've never actually thought about that because when I look at the millennials, I would think, oh, wow, they're this generation that is so different. They wear different clothes, they're outspoken, it's the whole fuck everybody mm-hmm. thing. I'm going to do what I want. But at the same time, there is this big fear of disappointment mm-hmm. or not being perfect mm-hmm. that I haven't really thought about. But I do definitely think that, that that that's true. What do you think about like cancel culture? Like I think cancel culture in a large part comes from millennials. I, yeah, I think I agree with that. I am not for cancel culture at all because then it breeds people being afraid to make a mistake. Mm-hmm. And so then I think we live, I think we go into a shell where we're not being fully ourselves and you're not afraid to dare and do anything great because you're so afraid to be canceled. Yep. So you're like, I don't want to say anything or do anything, but then it's like, then we don't get as much greatness. Right. That's right. So you're going to take like the best of being a millennial. You're just gonna take the best of being Alex and go with that. Mm-hmm. I also, I think with anything, like there's the good parts of it. And since I am a millennial and I was always probably the only millennial at a job or something at the time that I always just embraced it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I okay. like you. What do you, you think, Kim? Uh, no, I was just listening. I think that, um. I'm trying to think what you said something a minute ago that I was going to make a comment. Oh, I think that Alex is always up for a good conversation about something. So, yeah. I, but I do think that cancel culture stops that. Like yeah, you can't have your own opinion and ha- have a discussion about it. Right. You just get shut down. Yeah, that's right. And I've noticed that a lot through the last election. Yeah. Cause yeah. sometimes even, even if we're on the same side, we would argue over things. Mm-hmm. And when we go at it, sometimes it's like we both are kind of headstrong. Yeah. So, it can get tense. It can get tense. It's like it's like saying prayer at basketball games. Like we have a difference on that. I think you should always do it. And she thinks all the other basketball players that have these religions and things like that. So we can go at it pretty strong about that. But on most things, her and her husband both are pretty open about a discussion, even That's though great. they may not agree with what yeah. I think. And so what do you, what do you think? But I think cancel, cancel culture, culture is, stops, stops that. all that and then it's trash. Yeah, it makes people afraid of getting canceled. So it's like you don't want to have a discussion. You're not going to say the truth about how you feel. Like Alex will tell me certain words that I grew up saying that even if I Googled it in the Urban Dictionary and says I can say it, she said, you better not say that out loud. You still can't say that. Yeah. Which I think. That's good. You can let's navigate. I do think that's probably a good part of it, though, because Mm -hmm. if we have to find a good part of cancel culture, it does make you want to learn more and be more aware of what you do say, which I think in turn could very not pro I'm trying to find a good thing about cancel culture and I I, I think really that like it's it. great for people to be more aware and less ignorant and more sensitive sensitive to a degree I think it's great to be have more awareness it creates opportunities for women it creates opportunities for disenfranchised people it creates more understanding the problem is is that people fumble with words all the time and you fumble people fumble all the time mm-hmm. people are human and the, what I hate about cancel culture is if you trip once, you're dead. Yeah. And that's not right because no. people have got to fumble their way through things. And then people I know people get afraid of their past. Right, exactly. Because things yep. have happened then, but Correct. you were allowed to grow. Correct. That's cancel right. Culture. Growing is a good thing. Absolutely. We want, yeah. Everyone had blonde hair with blue tips and they're like, Ooh, I thought that was okay, and it wasn't. Yeah, and if I got canceled <laughs> yeah. for that, but what? But what be if sad. I? Sad. The world would be denied Alex and Kim. Exactly. <laughs> and what if I had learned from it? That's the whole. thing. You did learn from it. it Cancel culture like. wouldn't have let me. Yeah, that's right. Because I would have stopped back then. That's right. You would have just been frozen. All right. So where do people tell people where they find you? Um, just Alex Bennett on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter for me. Oh, this will be good. What do you, What are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Content Kim on all of them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was easy. Yeah. Kick content stri- with a K. Content with a K. Content yeah. with yeah. a K. Yes. Do you do you care that you take shit for that or no? Well, we only took shit for it when we did the coffee. 
Oh, is that what you meant? Yes. Yeah. That was only because, and I told her, I, I mentioned that. I said, maybe not coffee with a K because of that. But she's like, <laughs> why no, don't you no, explain no, the story? Fine. On the piece of paper behind Brandon Walker's head, it says coffee with a C, coffee with a hey. W, coffee with content Kim. It's C-W-K-K. When I typed it on the thing, this is my fault, I did coffee with a K. Second day Barstool Sports, we've created coffee with content Kim. First guest. What's his name? Brandon. Brandon what? Walker for the 100th time. You just K'd it. You just K'd the whole thing right through. three K's in a row. Okay. Day two, put it out on the day internet. Day two of Barstool Sports. Day put two. it on the internet and people yeah, just were terrible. like. Day two Barstool Sports. Coffee with Content Kim. I wanted to leave. I was reading those remarks, and they were like, don't read those. I was like, I have to. You have to read the comment <laughs> section. It's comments. good she for She was like, you. they're saying we're racist. And I'm like, oh, get off Twitter. You haven't been on it in 57 years. Don't start today. <laughs> yeah, that, Instagram didn't notice. Instagram was no, like, Instagram's real friendly. Instagram's like, you do you. Twitter's yeah. like, you idiot. Yeah, they're like, three. Oh, my. These two. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, they are mean. Awesome. <laughs> they're very mean. Yeah. Some of them are very smart though and you have to enjoy those yeah. people they are hilarious i Twitter's love a hilarious. nasty smart person the dumb the dumb trolls they suck they make they just hurt your feelings a smart troll is really nice if it yeah it can hurt but it can still be really fun yeah i agree okay yeah. well thank you guys for doing that i'm so glad we, i'm so glad you're here thank you we're so, we're happy, so to happy to be here. be here awesome all right next up we have danielle collins so danielle collins is just a ray she looks like a model but she's yeah. not she's tall she's gorgeous she's got great attitude she just re she is a professional tennis player um she was recently eliminated at the u.s open but what she talks to us about is being a fan of female sports mm -hmm. about her career from being a college student to a professional athlete uh, and what she's doing here in new york city for fashion week awesome very cool all right i'm very excited to talk about the u.s open okay but first so why don't we have you introduce yourself I'm Danielle Collins. Um, I'm a professional tennis player. I'm 27, and I'm from Florida. Um, I don't know. What else do you want to know about me? <laughs> What's your astrological sign and, like, your favorite color? Um, I'm a Sagittarius. Okay. And my favorite color is yellow. I like pretty much anything colorful. Okay, that's great. I'm a colorful person. Okay. Um, Florida people are. I'm really into my sign and being a Sagittarius I feel like it's very very me and I'm true to that okay so why are you like distinctly Sagittarius um very uh rambunctious okay spontaneous okay um I don't like too much routine like I, I like a certain amount and then I want every day to kind of be different okay like a new adventure I love that the travel is really big for Sagittarius and I love traveling that's probably my favorite thing about my life is getting able to being able to go all around the world and just get a new experience each week very free spirited and wild that's great Danielle you are in the right place um, <laughs> so I was going to ask you about that though so you're on the tour U.S. Open so we're having a timely conversation about tennis so here's my read on this year's U.S. Open one what is up with the breaks like we have to talk about the breaks I feel like it's like the teenagers are in charge, like <laughs> teenagers are in charge and social media's impact on players. Those I, th I think those are the big three things. So can you, in your words, Danielle, explain the break All situation? Three. Okay. All right. Um, to be honest, I don't really watch the men. They okay. Kind of bore me sometimes. Love that. There's a Do few you like that watching like the women? Yeah. Okay, great. Watching. I follow mostly women's sports. Great. I relate more to the women. Oh, yeah. So I follow a lot of different women's sports. And, uh, you know, I, I watch a little bit of the men's. Um, I didn't really get to see, like, what happened exactly with the breaks. I do think that sometimes people can be a little bit sus and try to play games, yeah. mental games. And I think if, you know, a 10-minute bathroom break is – a bit of, it was like nine or ten. Yeah. Minutes, so, right? so for anybody listening who's not following the U.S. Open, there is a Greek player. What's his last name? Come on, guys. Let's, let's not butcher it. Let's use the Google. <laughs> you want me to try saying it? Yeah, you try, Danielle. Sissy Pass. So we've got a player, <laughs> Stefanos. Sissy Pass. Okay, great. Who 
in the middle of the game to change. Well, we don't know exactly what his motives are, but there, apparently there's a rule in tennis, which is you can take a bathroom break whenever you want. Do you know this rule? Yeah. Okay. So every, all the players know you this rule. You used to be able to take multiple bathroom breaks. I think okay. you could take two. Now you can only take one. Okay. You can take one bathroom break, but there's no time stipulation on the bathroom break. Right. So this guy rolls into the U.S. Open this year and takes like an eight or nine or 10 minute break and he's doing it every match. I don't know if it was, I don't know if it was every match. He's doing sure. it repeatedly. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Is anyone following the story or is this just me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about though? Yeah, right? I know what you're okay. talking about. I so anyways, it. it started to really piss everybody off. Like it changed the momentum of the game. People were like, this is so obnoxious. It's an abuse of the rule. And then yesterday. Somebody went to the bathroom? Nope. The women were smarter. She said that she was having diaphragm issues. And it sounds like, if I were to guess, that tennis is going to have a reckoning on the rules after this season. Do you think so? I don't know, though, because... What happens if you really got to go? Do, do you ever have to go during a match? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Because the matches because are so like, long. B- the matches are long. Like, you think about, I mean, how often do you go to the bathroom? I mean, two I, or three. I, I don't drink three water, hours. so I never go to the bathroom. But. <laughs> <laughs> I try to, like, limit myself because, one, I don't really like having to, like, walk off the court and go to the bathroom. I'd rather just, like, keep it going. Yep. But there's been times it's like... I'm like, I try Girls to do it at the go. end of a set, okay. not in the middle. Okay. But sometimes I'm just like, I really got to go. Okay. I remember yeah. one year at Miami Open, I think, I can't remember who I was playing, but I think I may have been um, down a set and it was like middle of the set. And I think the girl may have thought, you know, I I was playing a game. I was like, no, no, like I got to go right now. So I ran and I actually made it back within, because the bathroom was right around the corner. I got back at the time of however long the break would have been 90 okay. seconds okay perfect. And she was like all right i guess you just had to really, really go. have to go yeah so okay. i made it quick but um i mean i don't know like it's always easy to be like oh like you shouldn't go to the bathroom but i mean at the end of the day it's kind of like what are we even talking about like we're talking about bathroom break it's like you know gotta go you gotta go and how do you really know it's true this i mean it, but if it does t- happen like consistently mm-hmm. Like you're saying, then I think, okay, maybe he is, maybe he could be. He could be, there could be some funny business. Yeah, there, there could be some funny business there. And I think that, you know, I, I, I have a bit of a problem with that. If it's being used as a tactic and it's not because you actually have to go. It's bad sportsmanship. Yeah, because I think there's some players too that do the same thing with the medical timeouts. Yes. Um, I experienced which is what that happens in the Which is what happens in the women's match. So what happened yeah, to you? I played a girl twice um, that. The first time we played, lost the first set. I won the second set. And then it was like, maybe, I think I may have been up 2-1 and on serve in the third set. She calls a medical timeout and comes out, totally different player, on fire, physically like primed, ready. It it didn't appear to me that she was in pain or yeah. injured. I ended up it, I ended up letting it affect my momentum sure. and my rhythm, and I lost the match. I was really upset about it. And then I played her in the finals of an event um, after that, and I was up a set. I won the first set, and then I was up kind of similar. It may have been 3-2, though. On serve again, calls a medical. Same, same exact thing. Um, and then I watched her do it about four or five different times against other players. Okay. Can you report someone? What's the recourse? I don't really know what they can do, though, because it's like if something's hurting the player, it's all within the rules, yeah. like taking the yeah. medical yeah. time out. It's just I think um, when you're doing it that often, it's kind of becoming a tactic yeah. a little yeah. bit more so because yeah. if you're having to call a medical timeout every match or that often, I think that maybe you need to take time off yeah, and, and heal your injury. Yeah, sure. But who knows? I mean, we can sit here and judge, but it's like you also don't know if the person's yeah. like legitimately, yeah. you know. All right, that's and a I nice get that from, I, and I get that too because like I've had so many health issues yeah. that I know that sometimes when I'm in pain, it's like I I need to have the the, I need the trainer. Yeah, yeah, it's like I need them to like tape it or try to get me an, a Tylenol in right away and do some soft tissue and try to loosen it up, or it's just not going to be a high quality match and. It's not good for my opponent. Yeah. Well, it could be good for my opponent if they're trying to win, but uh, it's not good for the fans, and it, it certainly isn't helping me. So yeah. I, I try to only do it when I'm – When you really absolutely need it. Okay, yeah. that's a good rule. 
All right, so that's so the breaks I think are very interesting. My read on it is that tennis has been such a pristine sport. Like I love the US Open. I think it's one of the best sporting events in the world. It's so you feel like you're entering your own world and it must be so spectacular from a player's perspective. I can't even imagine. But I think that tennis is is starting to tennis isn't immune to everything that's affected every other sport. Like I in some ways think that tennis is so proper. Do you feel do you feel like tennis is proper or no? You seem like such a not proper person. I'm not a proper person. <laughs> That's why we have you here. YOLO. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Back I'm up too orange. Short for that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um no, I mean, I think tennis I, I agree with you on that. I think that there's some traditions and things that are a little bit old school about yep. the game. And I think that's kind of like the aesthetic of yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. That's what they're going for. Yep. Um, but I think that's slowly starting to shift. Yep. And we're becoming more like other sports. And I like it for me because I think I'm more Well, you fit that. into that. Yeah. Yeah, I fit into that. Um, and I think when I first turned pro and came on the, the scene, people were like, whoa, why is she – why is she Who's getting this? fired up? Like, yeah. why is she competing? And it's like, well, I mean, if I turn on a baseball game or a football game or soccer or whatever it is, and we're watching the men compete, they don't have to justify mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. they're competing. Mm-hmm. But I think with the traditions in tennis and yeah. the properness of mm-hmm. it all, I think that that can sometimes leave fans and certain people uh, like, whoa, what is she doing? Yeah. But it's like, this is a sport. It's I love a that sport, for you. And I shouldn't have to justify why I'm competing. Absolutely. You know? And I also think there's such a stigma around female athletes that you're supposed to be perfect. I agree with that. I hate that. Yeah, I like, agree with that. Like, you are perfect, but you could be perfect and a great, fierce competitor. I think, too, public figures in general and sports people, being in the public eye, you get a lot of scrutiny. Um, and I think there is an expectation. And, like, the world we live in today, you can't make a mistake. Yep. You can't mess up. You have to be kind of – you have to fulfill so much of what other people's expectations are. But mm-hmm. you also have to balance that so that you don't go insane. Mm-hmm. And it's a tough – I mean, this has been, I think, a tough year for – a lot of players, um, as we yes. know, and I think with the mental health things that we we all face, it's um, we're learning. And I think I think a lot of like spectators and fans are kind of getting more insight to the pressures that we face day to day. Um, and people weren't aware mm-hmm. about that as mm-hmm. much before, but we do have an enormous amount of pressure on us, and we have um, as great as our lives are, and we're in these awesome positions. Um, it can be really challenging and I don't think anyone's immune to having bad yeah, days. Yeah. And I think people sometimes watch TV and they watch how great our lives may seem, but it's not always like that. It's also hard. I think in team sports, you can rail against a certain player, but you have the backup of everyone else on the team. I think what's so hard in gymnastics or track and field or in tennis, sports. it's just you. Yeah. That's so much pressure. Like yeah, it's so think, much pressure. I think that too is like where I think players um, now. I, I feel like we all have st- had some mental health struggles. I think all of us on tour can relate um, because when you're being brought down by other people, it's almost it almost feels personal. Yeah, it is personal because. You know, if you're playing on a team and you've got some a hole in the stands, being like screaming at you, screaming at you, and taunting the team, it's a little bit different because it's like, oh, they just don't like the team, mm-hmm. but we have each other, mm-hmm. right? And when you're on the court, it's like it's I'm just, just out you. here yeah. by myself, mm-hmm. and like, how do you think about your social media? Like, how do you think about your presence? I've been working on trying to portray my authentic self because mm-hmm. I think. Everybody at some point in time has like fallen into the trap of just having these like basic posts mm-hmm. that don't really offer a lot of yeah. substance and don't offer any type of conversation to the table. Mm-hmm. And I've tried to do a better job of just being my authentic self, sharing what I'm really thinking mm-hmm. about and going through. I think any sports has its highs and lows. You ride those highs out for as long as you can, but you get into some really, mm-hmm. really low mm-hmm. moments as mm-hmm. well. And and I've had my fair share of those. So I, I can speak a lot on that. Yeah. And so I want people to know that that kind of stuff is real yeah. and that when they're having those moments, they're not alone. Mm-hmm. Cause I think that's the worst part when you're having uh, 
tough times as you feel like yeah so alienated yeah and isolated and I think all of us whether you're a tennis pl- player whether you're working here at Barstool yeah. whether you're a model or working at CVS pharmacy we all have our bad days and we have to be able to have people that we can lean on and 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 also people that share their story and make it a little bit um more relatable yeah to get for through. sure so one of the things I love about you is I believe you are one of only three players that have your college degree and a master's degree is that I don't true? have my master's degree yet are you in the pro- are you getting it you don't have to I don't have a business kind degree of, I'm not pro of, business yeah, degree. Like I, I've been working on it but it's been a process okay yes, got it's it been a process but you finished college you were like I hey yeah, I'm gonna get UVA. a degree yep graduated from UVA did you love UVA I loved it I loved it. I mean, I went to Florida my freshman year, which was a great experience. And Gainesville was so different because it's a true college town. Um, And growing up in Florida, I had been to Gainesville uh, to watch the football games and and do all of that. You knew the tradition. Yeah. And all of my friends from high school either went to Florida or Florida State. So I had so many people, um, so many friends from high school when I went to Florida. So I felt like I already knew so many people Mm -hmm. when I was there. and then when I transferred to UVA, it was so different because Charlottesville, it's a college town, but there's also people that live there that have no affiliation mm-hmm. with the actual school. You have the best wineries and mountains huh. and all of these natural elements that make everything. I mean, that was my first out-of-state experience. Okay, I got lived it. in Florida my whole yep. life, so I was really attracted to that. Sure. And focused on that yep. on the weekends. I yep. was like, I want to go for a hike. Yeah, I want to do the wineries. I want to do, yeah, I get to experience all of these things that I didn't experience growing up in Florida and, and, and not knowing anybody at UVA really, except for like my teammates um, and having to make new friends because I felt like when I was at Florida, I was kind of hanging out with Liz. You were just in your Florida. past. Yeah. 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 And so I was kind of forced to meet new people, um, have new groups of friends. And Charlottesville is an awesome, awesome campus. It's a little bit, it's a bit smaller than Florida. So everything's more centralized. You can literally walk everywhere. And yeah, I mean, now that we're talking about it, I'm kind of like getting teary eyed. I'm like, I kind of miss it. It's so funny. UVA people are so proud. I literally was at dinner last night and some guy was in a ridiculous needlepoint UVA vest or um, (laughs) belt. They They wear their belt. Oh, they're so preppy, (laughs) but they love that blue and orange. Like, it's amazing. Yeah, so and I see people, too, pride. with, like, the class ring, oh, you yeah, know, I and I'll be like, oh, my God, is, you went to UVA, yep. and especially in New York. You have a lot of people here that went to UVA, but in Florida, where I live, I very rarely meet people who went to UVA, and I don't think any of the people that I was friends with at UVA ended up in, um, you know, Tampa or yeah. St. Pete, so. Um, is that where you live? Yeah. I yeah. like Tampa. Yeah. So nice. annoying. You guys are so obnoxious about all your victories. It's like <laughs> literally so annoying. Sorry we're so good. I mean, you're not. <laughs> you're like, it's like Boston. It's like what, what Boston should be. Then we gave it to Tampa. You can't even go in like frigging restaurant. It's like, we won this. <laughs> That's so annoying. But it's fun. Do you ever go to the WWE down there? Okay. I haven't been to WWE, but Meredith and I have been talking about this. Oh, you have to go. Yeah. This has been on my list because I love WWE. I love watching it. I love the energy, yep. like the personas. I feel like I wish we could have more of that in tennis. I honestly. agree. I wish it wasn't just so like mm, silent, mm, pretty and like these trim. little claps, you know? Yeah. Yep. I wish it was I wish there was a little bit more zazz. Yeah, sport. more characters. I yeah. love that. Yep. Um so WWE has been on my list. We were talking about this. It's so funny you brought that up. Okay, so for, you're so you're here so you're in New York City for Fashion Week. Yes. Till when? Um, I'm here pretty much all through Fashion Week. Okay, Got great. Veronica Beard. Love Veronica Beard. Um, Makes a great blazer. Sink A. Alice and Olivia. Okay. Love Alice and yep. Olivia. Um, Stodd. Okay. Did a collaboration with New Balance. Okay, yes. So that's, yeah. That's very they exciting. They really won my heart over with that. If you're here on Friday, the WWE's here on Friday. They're doing Ooh, SummerSlam. Okay. All right. You could get like, I know people there. We're doing fashion, uh, Vogue Fashion Fund. That's going to be awesome. Very yeah. cool. The most fun part has been picking out my looks. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What are you most excited about? I've got a one shoulder dress. Okay. And it's got like a sequin across. It's okay. Really kind of edgy. Amazing. It's black, but okay. it's got the sequins. And then. And I who have makes a, that? I, that's Isabel Morant. Okay. Oh, she's I love one of Isabel. my favorites. She's the best. Yeah. She's this like, is Isabel Morant. Nice. Yeah. I, I'm Pretty like the frumpy version I'm, of you. Yeah. Pretty, <laughs> 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 I. Uh, 
<laughs> I am. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> okay. No. Um, what else? I got a couple more looks from her. Okay. That are a little bit more difficult to explain. Yeah. Okay. My fashion lingo is not probably. That's okay. Up You're to gonna par. get there. Um. There's a lot of athletes a, coming in for Fashion Week. Paul Rabel's coming in. I'm really excited about these shoes that I'm going to wear at okay. Fashion Week. Um, so I have a friend, Daniela Chevelle. Okay. She has her own shoe line. Okay. And she makes heels and like these really cool retro boots. Ooh, I love. My favorite's the Belladonna. I have it in every single color. And uh, I'm going to wear some You'll of those colors. you be rocking some of that. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they're hot. you got to check these shoes out. I you will. would really like them. I'm going to do that right now. Thank you for coming in here. This Thank was you. awesome. Yeah. I'm going to watch you. I'm a fan of you. Thanks. I'd like to I'm buy a, a hockey of you too. Really? So. All right, great. Let's be fans. I like that. All right. Before we let people go, it's the adulting segment, Kate. You okay. have definitely had an adulting moment since I've known you. Do you think having a kid is part of adulting? I do. I still look at other moms and I feel like I'm like how are those adults over there doing it? Like, I still feel like I'm not there. Like, yeah, no, I get you. Like, I'm faking being an adult a lot of times. I think you'll be like but, 70 years old faking being an adult, don't yeah. you think? I always look at other people as adults and not myself. Probably because yeah. I still eat Reese's Puffs for breakfast every morning. Do but, you? Uh, oh, my God. With milk? I could eat a whole bowl. Really? I could pour a whole box in a mixing bowl. And really? just eat the whole thing till my mouth hurts. Absolutely. But don't you, doesn't that leave you empty and hungry? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> More great decision making from Kate. Speaking yeah. of, I've never had this with Reese's. Puff. I've never had Reese's Puff. I was mm-hmm. not allowed to eat sugar cereal growing up, which is I was allowed to eat grape nuts. <laughs> Seriously, that's. But have you ever had grape nuts? Absolutely, but you got to dump nuts. brown sugar in it. Oh no way! Yeah, that was, where sugar was not allowed. A little in my butter, house. like four pads of butter, brown sugar. What? Was, put it on the stove. We had it hot. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah. Sugar. No. It becomes this like this sweet slop. It's great. Wow. Yeah. But it would get so soggy. That's the that's the perfect point. Ugh, yeah. Gross. I liked mine crunchy, <laughs> so I would have to pour the milk in and like yeah. you know, hustle up to eat it. This is why you're a CEO. And did I, your do your Reese's puffs get soggy? No, I, they don't have a chance. I'm hoovering <laughs> those suckers down. Yeah. All right. So speaking of hoovering things, we love when people hoover down safely high noons. We love high oh, noon, yeah. mm-hmm. real vodka, real yeah. juice with a splash of sparkling water, mm-hmm. only 100 calories. They've got their tropical pack. Do you have a favorite high noon flavor, Kate? I do. The, they had a peach oh, flavor the peach is the on best. ice this summer. So I didn't good. get many drinks, but that was the one. You know, it's a good product when like going down to some of the barstool shore houses and like that was just what we were all getting on our own was yeah you pick up the nooners yeah. yeah that's right wait you went to the shore house not that shore. i went to there was another one in asbury park there was a more adult shore house of ours yeah. so it was a good park oh squad. you yeah. went to like the feidelberg house yes i went to the feidelberg house the, huh. the feidelberg residence um interesting so yeah. what was that like it was it was like I was just a, drinking high noons on the beach was, in new jersey not with glenny balls not with glenny balls there was nobody was getting lucky in this house yeah it was okay. very much like everyone a, had a bedroom and a bed a bedroom it's twelve thirty. could you keep it down a yeah bit? okay yeah. okay did you bring the yeah. child uh yes i was the buzzkill of the house i yes i did um but we were up on the third floor okay. we were like trolls up there that would come down from yeah. time to time okay uh, but sitting on the porch with my high noons this summer that was like a nice like oh thank god that's a great a moment so it was if you want to be like kate you can head to the mm-hmm. liquor store bring your child yeah. and get some high noons today absolutely Okay, Kate. How, so the question for adulting is, how do you turn an informational interview into a job offer? And an informational interview, right, is like if I didn't work here, but I reached out, Erica, I'm, I'm majoring in this. Can I just pick your brain? Yes. Is that what? Yes, okay. that's right. Got it. And then you just maybe find an open desk, settle in. And never leave. Start wearing bar stool clothes. <laughs> and then just never leave. It's that great. would work here, except now we have security. That's true. Yep. Yes. Uh, def- definitely now we have security. security at Barstool Sports, which yes. I'm very excited about. It's Frank the Tank, by the way. So good luck. Yes, exactly. If you try to, yeah, yeah. If you try to break for it, he'll right. get you. Mm-hmm. Anyways, okay, my my advice on how do you take an informational interview and turn it into a job. One, you've got to impress in that informational interview. So you should not think about it as just getting information. Mm-hmm. You've got to convey a lot of information about yourself. You don't want to sell it too hard because that could annoy the manager because yeah. they're like, hey, dude, I'm just doing doing you a favor to, right. to interview. Um, but I, I think it's the same thing that goes really with any interview, which is if you follow up, 
if you, you know, you show you well, you, you give good reasons for why you should be part of this company or how you can create or show how you can create value for a company. Mm-hmm. Um, you th- send a thank you note for the time from the person you follow up frequently and you provide new ideas to that manager or you meet and have informational interviews with other people at the company. That would be a good way to get a job, I think. I think so too. And also maybe they don't have anything, but if they're at a higher level and they're having lunch and their friend needs some, oh, you know what? I know somebody who'd be perfect. You know, maybe they might offer you up. Or yeah, that's like right. That, so. The other thing you could ask in your informational interview is if you, if there are any internships. Yeah. You know, even unpaid. I think it's sometimes great to take an internship. I think so too. Internships, I think, have far higher chances of turning into jobs than informational interviews. Even if it's in the most roundabout way. It might not be direct, but again, I'm such like a dork with the net. You never know who you're going to meet and what that's going to lead to. And like, just, yeah, put yourself out there for the internship and don't be an asshole. Be cool. Great. (laughs) Well, I love it. All right, Kate, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for doing that. Thanks for having me. What else are you doing today? Anything fun? Ah, uh, Erica, I'm slammed with content. Oh, and really? Just blogs slammed. And you know me. Yeah, I'm just slammed. busy bee. Yeah. Uh, I, I hang out in the pump room now. I, I saw that I we have a mother's room. We have a mother's room. Enrique decorated it beautifully. Oh, what's in there? There is a beautiful. I'm going to go in there today. A beautiful soft chair. There's the Do we have a plug? Did you hear about the, well, who was the company that didn't have an outlet? So some, someone who listens to our show, their company, their yeah. stupid company, yeah. had a mother's room without a plug. Hi, Brandy Melville. Again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, no, it's a delight. There's a fridge in there. There is soft lighting. There's a blanket on this soft chair. There's a beautiful mirror. There's like toiletries. And like That's I go in so there now great. with my laptop. Just I hide. Find, and then I'm like, oh, my God, I've been in here for two and a half hours. I should probably come out. I'm working. We should I- call it Kate's office. I want to put, somebody said I should get the Nike pump shoes and like put that on the outside <laughs> so people know it's like I hate that room. we, I don't love the branding of it. No, it says, it says mother's room on it or I, something. Yeah, or something. It's right yeah. next to the big conference room, right? I think it should be the tits room. Yeah, let's do it. All right. That would be very like us. You can name it whatever you want. I will. And you can stay in there for as long as you need. I'm heading there now, Erica. Okay, Thanks. great. That's it for today's episode. Yeah. You can watch this on YouTube. You can get more of Kate on Zero Blog 30 mm-hmm. or on the Barstool Sports blog. Or maybe on TikTok or Instagram. Do you want to say your handles? Oh, at Kate Barstool. Great. Got a real original. Woman of many last names. We just call her Kate Barstool, like most people here. And you can call us at 440 462 1729. If you don't feel like calling us because you're a millennial and you don't use your phone as a phone anymore, you can also fill out the Google form. I think millennials are more comfortable with Google forms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you have a question for us or if you have something you would like us to talk about. And that's it. Cool. All right, thanks, Kate. Thanks for having me.